Yeah, man. Whenever a customer buys a new guitar and they bring it here for a setup, it gives me the opportunity to do a review for you. Uh, so uh, the most important aspect of an acoustic guitar is the sound. So let's see what it sounds like. It sounds good. Don't worry. I know what I'm doing. I'm a professional. I'll just give you a moment to get over your shock and disbelief, and then we'll continue. You good? All right. Oh, please do me a favor. Close your mouth. Thank you. There's no Chinese proverb that says, what I like, I take. What I don't, I break. Now, I don't know if you caught my hint, but I didn't particularly like that guitar. Uh, to be honest, during the sound check, I heard a little string buzz, and that's just unacceptable. This is a non-sponsored review, so the opinions expressed in this video are my own. The manufacturer did not influence me to say anything that I don't want to say. Welcome back to Guitar Quackery, and now let's do a deep dive into this acoustic guitar. And let's unravel the mysteries of all of the imperfections that I've discovered, because there's more than one. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, to be honest, I did the entire review before the sound check. So now we'll go back in time. Okay, let's do this. We gotta do this quickly because it's late. Uh, we'll look at the guitar. I'll show you some close ups. This is the saddle. Um, the saddle height looks just about right. So we, we want to make a mental note of that. It's, it's just about right. Uh, now, it's an acoustic electric guitar, which means it has an output jack somewhere. That's here at the back, battery compartment and strap button. I want to show you the nut. Uh, well, I've seen better ones. There's a little gap here. Uh, not too good, all right? Uh, I, I want to show you something about the bridge on this guitar. So let's put it here where there's light. Let's focus our attention to this detail. And you can see there's a little gap and a step. And uh, if I take a, a feeler gauge, you can see that the gap surrounds the bridge. Okay, and it's quite deep. Okay, so what does this mean? Well, they basically just routed a recessed uh, area that matches the outline of the bridge so they can glue the bridge in and produce a nice outline, nice and sharp, but they routed it too deep. Okay. This is the back of the guitar. It looks good. There's a nice book matched pattern here. The neck looks good. And I'm happy to see there's no scarf joint here. You know, uh, so that's good. These are the tuners. Um, yeah, it's a, uh, you know, good looking guitar. Now, is it any good? And that's what we want to find out. Let's play the guitar. That's the open E string. There's some buzzing. Now let's play the frets. Buzzing. The bass side is good, but it starts to buzz at the D string. Even fretting out on the high E. completely frets out if, if you play the high notes here. 
So what does this mean? Well, it means there's an issue. When we hear buzzing like this, we can suspect maybe a back bow on the neck. Maybe the action is too low or maybe a combination of both. And when we hear buzzing on the open string, we also want to check the nut. Uh, because uh, if the string slot is too low, well, it's going to buzz. So why don't we check uh, if there's a back bow first? That's easy to check with a straight edge. If there is a back bow, it means there's a hump here, which means that when we place a straight edge across the fretboard, it would be rocking like this. But it's not rocking. In fact, it's flexing, which means that there's a relief. Now, we want to know how much of a relief uh, we have. Uh, so we'll take feeler gauges and we'll measure the relief. relief the relief we typically want to see is, uh, let's say, six one thousandths of an inch measured on the eighth fret. Um, but if the frets are even. Now, I already measured that with the fret rocker, they're even. So let's just take a measurement of the relief. Six one thousandths of an inch passes. The next one, eight one thousandths does not, which is this one. Eight one thousandths of an inch did not pass. So now let's move this over to the treble side. Eight one thousandths of an inch does not pass and the next one is six one thousandths passes and just to confirm this is in fact six one thousandths of an inch so the relief is actually on spec so next thing we want to check is uh, the action the string height um i'll do it this way put the camera there so um so the action is debatable how much it should be i like to set my action on on an acoustic guitar uh to 80 one thousandths of an inch on the treble side and 100 one thousandths of an inch on the bass side so here let's first focus on our high E string right here. So this is the height we want to measure. Let's make sure we're in focus. And this is a string action gauge. 81 thousandths of an inch is this measurement here. So we place this over the 12th fret and we can see that the string is much lower than that. In fact, it's at 30, barely at 31 thousandths of an inch. I'm tapping the string now, right? Uh, so that's well below spec. I want to move the camera down a little bit so that we can measure the action on the low E string, which we're going to look at right now from the side. And here we have it. We are now focused on the low E string. This should be 100 one thousandths of an inch, uh, which is this measurement right here. So if we place it here, once again, it's below that. It's just a little bit above 70, not quite 75. Maybe I'll call it 72. One thousandths of an inch on the base side. So the action is too low. The relief is correct, the action is too low, and remember we made a mental note that the saddle height is just about right. So when we see that, we immediately suspect that maybe the neck angle is incorrect, and that's what we're going to look at now. To measure the neck angle, we just take a long straight edge and we place it across the frets and we project the fretboard onto the bridge 
But before we do that, we make sure that the relief is correct, which we just did. Um, so let's uh, place the straight edge here. And now it should be kissing the top of the bridge, but you can see that there's a gap. So this means that the bridge is too low, which in turn means that the neck is overset. So this means that the neck is angled in this direction too much, which brings the strings too low. And it's going to create that gap between the bridge and the straight edge that we're projecting. But there's more to the story. Now, let's focus our attention on the soundboard. And I will first show you this from above. So if I place a straight edge across the soundboard, there should be a little hump here. But this is quite a severe hump. In fact, if I uh, show you from this side, you can see that there's a huge hump behind the bridge. Um, and it's, it's lifting the back, the back end of the bridge and tilting the entire bridge in this direction. All right. So um, everything after this point is actually lifted up. Okay. Now we're going to talk about this hump. But before we do, we uh, just want to check the nut because we heard that buzzing on the open E string. So when we hear buzzing on an open string, we need to check the nut to make sure that the string slots are not too low. And that's what we're going to do right now. Okay, we are now uh, focused on the first two or three frets. Um, the quick way to check uh, the nut height is simply to push the string against the second fret and then check if there's a gap that remains between the first fret and the string. And there is a gap. Uh, in fact, the gap looks, you know, kind of big. So uh, let's take a dial indicator and measure the gap. So after we push the string down against the second fret, and then we push the string against the first fret, it should only move about two check marks. So this is more. So this is more than a sufficient gap. In fact, it's too much, uh, too much of a gap. Uh, on the B string, it's way too high. G string, way too high. D, very high. A string, big gap. And uh, low E string also has a very big gap. Um, so um, the nut has never been filed, I think, right? So it was just installed and they called it good. So if we want this guitar to function correctly or any guitar to function correctly, the string slots need to be filed down to the bare minimum. So this is way too high. But the string, the high E string was buzzing, right? So even if it's too high, it was buzzing. So now we need to check uh, through the microscope to see what might be causing this uh, buzzing. And here, I am uh, focused on the high E string. And if I moved, wiggle the string, the way it would be vibrating when playing, we can see that it's moving inside of the nut. Okay. So why don't we take the string off? I'm just going to unwind the string. Okay. You can see it being unwound and now we remove the string and we 
confirm that in fact um, the string was seated at the back end of the knot but it never came in, in contact. It should be anchored at the front but it really wasn't. So uh, this is why it was buzzing when we played it open. Okay. That's that. So now let's talk about that um, soundboard hump. We want to have uh, another look at that. I'm just going to set up the camera here. And now we're going to do something real interesting. We are going to perform a colonoscopy on this guitar. So this is the equipment. So we are going to insert this at the uh, back of the guitar, at the rear end of the guitar. Let me put it here for now. Um, so I'm going to show you from above first. I got to remove this uh, strap button, which holds um, the battery compartment so that we can access the guitar from the back. Okay, so now this is not for kids. So if you are a minor unsupervised, this is where you stop watching. All right. I'm going to use my phone here as a screen. And here we have a camera. And let me switch to this view over here. So let's place the camera inside. And here you can see the bridge plate. I can even record a video. All right. So now we are approaching the corner of the bridge plate where it meets that brace and you can clearly see you can clearly see a gap between the brace and the soundboard right there okay so uh, you can even see a glue residue left on the soundboard and there's a huge gap so we found at least one brace that's unglued. I can switch the camera angle if I push this button. And now we're looking at the soundboard. And I believe that's the same joint right there. And okay, so it's an acoustic electric, so there's those wires in the way, but you can you can clearly see the gap between the brace and the soundboard right there. And it extends all the way, all the way there to the edge of the guitar. That's that. Here, I probably want to switch the camera again. There are two cameras inside. And it's uh, quite neat to have this view of the guitar. Uh, we went too deep. Okay, so the you know uh, those wires are in the way, but here we are going against that brace again, and I think we've seen enough. Just uh, want to make sure. See if if I play the guitar, it's kind of neat. I only see one brace that's unglued. There might be others, but it would take longer to to really explore the inside of the guitar. Uh, I think uh, we've seen enough. Uh, this is what it is. Stop the recording here. 
So let's talk about this. Um, what would we have to do to fix this guitar? Well, for sure, we need to fix the loose brace. That's on the inside of the guitar. We need to clean up the glue joint and re-glue that brace that's on the inside of the guitar. So we, we work through the sound hole. Uh, so that's kind of like building a ship in a bottle. It's a high skilled um, repair job uh, that takes a long time and is costly. Well, that would flatten the soundboard, which would bring the bridge down, which would in turn bring the strings down even closer to the fretboard, which would make it buzz even more. So that brings us to the neck angle issue. So now we need to reset the neck angle. So we need to unglue the neck and then reset the neck angle. We need to carve some wood and re-glue it. And when a neck is overset, you can't really do a good neck reset because it opens a gap at the heel of the neck. And there's no elegant way to deal with that. Uh, so those are two major structural repairs. They're, uh, they're quite expensive. And then we have another expensive repair, which is the nut. So if we're gonna go through all this trouble, we can't leave the nut like this because it's way too high. So now the question is, is it worth fixing? I don't know if you've noticed, but I did this whole colonoscopy without any anesthesia because as I'm sure you can see, I'm really gentle with guitars. This comes with years of experience. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. This is the perfect time for you to click, click, click. And one important click that you should do right now is copy and paste the link to this video and post it on your favorite guitar forum. This way you help the community because the community needs the information that I provide in on this channel. All right, so thank you for that. You help the channel grow. Now, I got some bonus material for you. The guitar autopsy. Humpty Dumpty is back on the bench. Yeah, uh, here's the neck. Oh, uh, just realized we should put a neck rest here uh, because we don't want to put too much stress on the headstock. Okay. Oh, and somehow, uh, yeah, uh, this fell out. I don't know how that happened. Uh, but that's an easy fix, I think. You know, we can fix it. Um, see, now the interesting thing is that we can actually look inside of the guitar without doing a colonoscopy. It's called an autopsy, right? Uh, we can simply uh, turn, it, turn it this way and we can examine those loose braces. Uh, speaking of braces, look, ah, some braces just fell off and we want to look at that. Um, so w why don't we look at uh, these loose braces first? So as you can see, um, this, uh, this is a uh, wood from, uh, it's actually from the back of the guitar, from the back plate, right? Uh, but here, nothing ripped from the back plate. So, so the glue was not very strong. And if you look here, well, I can feel the glue residue, but this brace was never glued onto the uh, board properly, right? And uh, this one, uh, 
Well, this one looks better, but not here, okay? And this one, well, now you know what to look for. So you see this was a full contact with the board, and here, no contact at all, and no contact at all over there either. Um, so those are the braces from from the back of the guitar, not from from the soundboard. Okay, just want to emphasize that. The soundboard braces are still there, kind of, uh, and we we can we can look inside and we can see what we see. Uh, so now we have a full view. Uh, okay, I gotta be careful. I don't want to scratch it. Oh, there's a little scratch here, but you know th that'll buff right out. I'm not really worried about that. Uh, so <clears throat> here we have a fragment from a brace. I don't know how that happened. And here, if I uh, play, well, you know, I need something. Um, what should I use? Maybe this. Yeah, that works. Okay. So let's look inside. I need to raise the camera a little bit. And I think I'm going to need an extra light. Let's see. Okay, I gotta raise it up a little bit more for you. Okay, good. That's a good view. I do have a light here. Takes a few seconds. Okay. Uh, let's light it up. Put it right here. I'm sure you want to see what I'm doing. Uh, I'm basically placing the light here. So now we have a nice light source and we want to focus um, our attention to that brace over there. So that's the brace that was, uh, you know, unglued and then uh, the strings were pulling the soundboard or oh, so this light is falling off. So the strings were pulling the soundboard and we had a big belly so uh, as we like to say in the business the guitar was pregnant right Why? I'm not sure if it's politically correct yeah I right. can't take a joke come on uh, something interesting here to look at Okay, look at that. So we see the bridge plate. Uh, let's focus on these bridge pins and the strings. Okay, that's just interesting. Uh, here we have the uh, under saddle pickup uh, lead wire coming out. Okay, and here we have a whole bunch of wires. So it looks like these braces were actually solid. It was just one brace that was unglued and uh, I wonder uh, do I have a feeler gauge here I do have it somewhere okay now it's buried in this clutter I have that one feeler gauge that's usually a separate thing here it is all right so let's have another look inside uh, I wonder if there's a gap between the bridge plate and the soundboard. There isn't here. Okay, so uh, no gap. Look at that. All right. How about here? No gap. Okay. Um, yeah. You know, uh, it really looks like a high-quality guitar. It's got potential. Maybe I fix it up. Or I have an idea. 
Maybe I send it to Tanya, to Kiev. What's her name? Tanya Spachuk, I think. I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing correctly. Yeah, she uh, she does some uh, great work. I think uh, I think I know who you who who I mean. Yeah. Okay, so that's it, my friends. I have the autopsy report right here. And, you know, this kind of autopsy report can also be viewed as a review of the guitar. So if you like these kinds of unbiased, non-sponsored reviews, non-sponsored means that I don't have a sponsor, but you could easily become a sponsor. You can just click the link below that says buy me a coffee or any of the other links that make sense. And then you become a sponsor. And then I work for you. Or perhaps you prefer that I get sponsorship from, uh, you know, the manufacturers, distributors, and the dealers who want to sell the gear to you. Yeah, whatever makes sense. So before I show you uh, the findings of the autopsy report, I want to remind you that I am now speaking to you in my official capacity as a New York City Commissioner for Guitar Affairs for the New York City Department of Guitar Maintenance and Repairs. So I have full authority to discuss this with you. Let's have a look at the findings. See, I'm working late again. Uh, here it is, uh, guitar autopsy report by the New York City Department of Guitar Maintenance and Repair. It's a Fender New Porter acoustic electric guitar. Uh, color brown, number of frets. Remarks, string buzz detected during sound test. Okay. Uh, now, here are the findings. Unglued nut, loose braces, soundboard hump, severely overset neck, misaligned bridge. Yeah, that's it. Uh, now, all I need to do is sign it and certify it. And now uh, this goes into the archives. That's it, my friends. It's official. Uh, on the day of the sound test, which you've seen me do at the very beginning of this video, I was working at the shop. And on Thursdays, I like to watch one of my favorite YouTubers, Steve Cassidy Guitar. He has a live stream every Thursday, which I highly recommend you should watch. Check out his channel. I'll put a link below. And while I was watching, I posted a comment about what I just did. <laughs> guitar quackery. Right, that's a brilliant comment. You just smashed the Fender Acoustic into pieces. Fantastic, mate. I hope that's up on your channel. Check out Guitar Quackery's channel as well. Um, I hope there's a video on that, mate. That sounds brilliant. <laughs> well, that was Steve Cassidy from Steve Cassidy Guitar. He's a music teacher. Um, I love his channel. He's got this uh, very unique visual identity and a really good personality. So... Do me if no, don't do me a favor. Do, do yourselves a favor. Check out his channel. All right, and um, that's it. Um, but if you want to do me a favor, you can click some links below. Uh, one of the important links is the share link, because then you share this knowledge with the community. This is why I do it. So you can take a link, the link from this video and share it. One good way to share it is to post on your favorite guitar forums. If you feel that others would benefit from the information on this channel. Because I, I need to grow this channel in order to continue. So if you feel that this is useful to you and that it would be useful for the community, you know, you can do some sharing. That's it. Um, also, I highly recommend that you check out my 
recent video on uh, warranty repairs. That's going to shed some light and explain some things and answer some questions. So I think you should do that.